This is Christine Bertram, and I am coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And it's Thursday. <laughs> it's time for some stamping. Fun time. So we will let people roll on in. <laughs> roll on, Mama, like I asked you to do. Like Alabama would sing it. I was just thinking about that. I was supposed to go see the Alabama concert back uh, last year. It was canceled because of the pandemic. And then I was supposed to go see them in August and it was canceled because of the corona. And then it got rescheduled to January and it's right during the middle of the winter creative escape. So I won't be <laughs> going to see Alabama. <laughs> so, all right, let's see if I can get myself up here um, and make sure I'm live because that's what it's all about. Let's see, guys. I don't see any comments. <laughs> all right, here it is. Look at that, six people, woohoo. <laughs> like, I've got my purple shirt on. There's Carissa. Hi, Julie. Hi, Debbie Schultz. Woohoo, okay, nine people. Awesome, so you guys, I wore purple tonight. It's my favorite color. I'll really look matching with the hive tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love it. Hi, Faye Gabby. All right, you guys, there's Karen Wettstein. We have some monthly card class cards to make tonight. It's the October, you guys, it's October, and we're halfway through it. Tomorrow is already the 15th. How does that happen? <laughs> you guys, every week that flies by, it's just crazy. So, hi, Sandy Wicklander. Um, hi, Brenda Wood. Hi, Penny Powell. So, I've never seen Alabama, <laughs> so I'm a little bit jelly that you've seen them back in the 90s. I bet they were like smoking hot back then, too. <laughs> hi, Jana. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Gail. Um, so, my brother thought, we better go see Alabama because they're on their retirement um, run, like their last year of touring, and then they were going to like give it up, I guess. And so, we were looking forward to getting down and dancing to some Alabama. <laughs> hi, Randy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Gwen. And... I guess now it's, I think it's rescheduled if I, I'm looking at the calendar and it's October. Um, it's like January 14th or 15th and I, I have a shoebox swap plan for that night. And you know, stamping is more important than Alabama, I guess. <laughs> so, hi Jeannie Terwilliger. Hi Carol. So, we're going to make, hi Hildenel. <laughs> yes, they were, right? Yeah, I don't know the lead singer's name off the top of my head. I can't think of it, but I always liked his long, dark hair. I, he was a pretty attractive guy. <laughs> he probably still is. <laughs> hi, Pam. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Anne. Hi, Tammy. Uh, so, hey, Lynn Beasley. So, I have to ask a question, and this is uh, on behalf of Tyler. <laughs> I, I thought somebody that I've talked to or I've called, hi, Laura, one of my customers that I've called in the last six months, and I do call, you guys, you, you probably know, I've talked to some of you. I, t I called somebody, and I don't remember, Lynn, and it popped up when your name popped up, it triggered a memory. I don't know if it was Lynn or Judy Bobo, but somebody I called, and it said that you're on hold while your number is being validated that you're not a spammer. And Tyler's getting a lot of spammer calls, and it's not making him very happy. <laughs> it's actually making him grumpy pants. And I don't like Tyler when he's a grumpy pants. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? One of my customers has some sort of a, and I could Google this, you guys, but hi, Stacey Ray. But <laughs> I could go to the Google and ask the Google. But I'm like, well, maybe I'll catch somebody that is watching me right now. And you can reach out to me and tell me, what do I need to do? Hi, Sherry Martin. Hi, Melanie Foy. I'm pretty sure that when I called this customer, it was somebody, I, I, it put me into like a waiting room and it said, you are being checked or you're being screened um, and to make sure that you're a valid number. And then it put them into, um, and once it was validated, then it went to that person so that it kept ringing or it put me into a voicemail. I'm trying to remember who it was that has like call screening. That's what it's called, you guys. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. So call screening, who would you recommend and what have you used in the past? And is it expensive? Is it worth it? Does it eliminate the stress? Because honestly, Tyler is ready to pull out his hair, I think, with these spammers that are calling him. And I'm like, just don't answer him. Like, you don't have to answer him, but he gets calls from people through work and he's is like, he can't not answer the phone, so. It keeps being interrupted. Oh, I don't know. I'm watching it pretty good, you guys. I have 39 people watching already with me, so that's awesome. And I was just going to comment, you guys. Um, it's been a while since we had that freezing episode. Hi, Megan from Denver. Do you remember when the hurricane went through back in August and it kept freezing? 
for like two weeks, like sporadically. And it really has been good for about a month now. And I went, I don't want to jinx it, knock on the countertop. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. So hi, Gail. I wish I was in Canada too. <laughs> I wish I could be everywhere. Like in person is always awesome, but you guys get me online. So that's exciting. Hi, Hit Jewel. Um, Oh, Hilda wants to know too, <laughs> like what this call screening is entailing. So if you guys have any information you can provide to me about call screening, I can Google it. I will go look and research because Tyler being great, Gumbry Pans is not a good Tyler. <laughs> so, all right. So we've got the October monthly class coming up. We're going to make three cards, you guys. Um, um, three cards. A new phone doesn't put those calls through. That's awesome, Laura. Um, Debbie said, if I don't recognize the number, I just don't answer. It's a legitimate call. They'll leave it. That's what I think too, you guys. If you ever call me and, well, for one, if I'm at work, it goes to voicemail. I, I look at it as like, if I can't answer the phone, if it's not a spammer, somebody will leave me a message. And if it's a spammer, I'll get the, you need to uh, get your car warranty under control or something, whatever it is. So, um, so yes. Um, some of you guys sound like you're having issues with the internet, but I think that um i think that you're good like for me i'm watching it it hasn't given me any issues so colleen i still have a card from you you won <laughs> you won this card last week and i have it sitting right by my my computer here i have been a little busy beaver busy bee i should say not a beaver a busy bee this week so um just i'll get the cards i'm working on it <laughs> so hi anna revadu i hope you're feeling better so you guys, did you see Kelly's Technique Thursday today? So she completely like went all over <laughs> Carissa's card and she gave her lots of credit. So I'm gonna point the camera down, you guys. I'm gonna show you Carissa's card. So we had the team swap party. Um, it was back September 19th already, last month. That's crazy. And um, so this was Carissa's swap card for the team swap party. So um, set your phone to do not to make the settings except for the number on your contact list. So if you set your phone to do not disturb, the numbers on your contact list. I'll have to look into that, Kathy. Um, I don't, we'll have to see. <laughs> so Chris is driving and I'm showing off her card here. <laughs> so, so this was a card that Carissa made for the team swap party. And so what Kelly showed a technique on was the whole birch wood with the white ink on here. And so Kelly did not even go through the effort of making a different card. She just completely went off of Carissa's card. So you guys, if you missed the Technique Thursday, go ahead and watch it. That is on the Cards by Christine Facebook page. Beautiful card, Carissa. You guys, what's coming up? This is what we're going to make tonight. Um, we've got a Halloween card. We've got a Thanksgiving-ish card. And we have a Christmas card. So this was your card class where you got a little mix of all the holidays. So we're going to be making these tonight. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. Um, so we're going to make those in just a little bit. I think I have one kit left, you guys. So if you're watching tonight and you think, oh, man. Hi, Amy Ponce. If you guys are thinking you wish you had the kits, I think the first person that says it, that they want it, then it would be the, that person would get it. <laughs> so you guys, this is what's coming up on Sunday. I have one kit left for this one, too. This is called Let's Just Stamp, featuring the Nature's Harvest uh, uh, stamp set. So you, if you don't have the Nature's Harvest stamp set, you would just need some sort of flower power going on here and some sentiments. And so uh, this is the class I do with Diane Bogenhagen. She's doing it in person on Tuesday night, guys, the 19th. She has some openings yet. If anybody is interested, you could come and do this if you're local to us here. Diane teaches the class. You guys, it's date night, so I will not be around as far as I know. I'll be somewhere with Tyler, hopefully doing something. Or maybe we'll just be home. <laughs> I don't know. But um, she's still taking reservations for that. And then there's two more classes that are coming up that I consider both October classes. The Fun Folds is um, coming up October 28th, which is in two weeks from tonight. We're going to be doing the pinwheel card. <laughs> I, I always call it a spinner card, you guys. So it's a pinwheel card. And so I still got to add a little ribbon on here and <laughs> some more bling. But so that one, you guys, if you haven't done one of these, it's pretty cool. All you really need to do is have some sentiments and potentially a Christmas tree or something to put on this if you're um, doing the online version. So that's the pinwheel. This one, you guys, all you need for this one is a sentiment. Uh, the stocking is all die cut. 
and then whatever you want to stamp on the inside. So I don't know if it's what the terminology for this type of a fold is, but there's these little tabs. It's like a pull tab type thing. And so it opens like that. Uh, so that's one of them. This one was cased by Diane Bogenhagen. She did a card very similar to this to the Summer Creative Escape. And we love it so much with all these grays. Oh my gosh. So this was the Peaceful Cabin. And it's like, somebody called it a banner card, I think. But um, the, oh, Carol, I was just reading your message. I'm not sure if you're watching, but I just got your message. I call, it's like a bridge card because it looks like a bridge and it's like split side bridge card is what I call it. <laughs> so you guys, what you need for this is some trees, a sentiment, and this is paper right here. So you, this is all designer paper and something to stamp on the inside. And then there's a piece on the back that you can stamp some trees. So this one's a great one. And the last one we're doing is a bay window card. So that slides in there and it opens like this. This is that Nature's Harvest stamp set as well. Um, so Penny wants to sign up for the fun folds. Penny, I'll write your name on a piece of paper. You guys, it's that easy for signing up for class, okay? I try not to make it difficult. So you can sign up for this class. All I need is an, somehow you gotta tell me and I gotta give you correspondence back that, um, that I have you on the class list. That's the most important part is that your name gets added to my class list. Um, and then we'll figure out if you wanna pay for it or if you wanna place an order to get it for free. So this is an order of $40. You get this one for free as long as you use my current host code. It, if you don't use the host code, you can call Stampin' Up right away and have them add it. But if you don't use the current host code, it doesn't qualify for a, a future class. I'll give you a past class as a thank you, but then it's at my discretion what class it is. So it's always, I'm trying to encourage you guys to use my current host code. Um, so what this class is for the fun folds, it's these four cards. It's $20 if you want the kits mailed to you. Hi, Donna. Um, and I'm telling you, uh, the, it's $20 if you want it mailed. Porch pickup is $15. Um, otherwise, if you guys want it for free, um, what is, I'm going to read Linda's message here. Removing our Verizon landline after getting at least a dozen a day. We don't answer, but it rings. Okay. So it's so annoying. Yes. Kathy Groves too. Like here you guys, Kathy and Laura, I'll add you and we can connect tonight, tomorrow, this weekend. You can figure out how you want to, if you place an order. Hi, Kay Weir. If you place an order, it has to be minimum $40 for it to, for mailing. And then it's free. I will send you all the supply. All the paper, the ink, um, paper, ribbon, embellishments, um, any embossing is done, any die cutting is done. You just need to have stamps, ink, and adhesives. If you use the host code with a minimum $40 order, once you place your order, all you have to do is reply and somehow tell me, hey, I just placed an order and I want to use that order for this class to get it for free. Hi, Patricia. That, that's it, you guys. That's as simple as it gets. You don't even have to go through my website to sign up for class. All you have to do is tell me that you want to sign up for class. I add you to my class list that looks like this. You guys, really, honestly, this is it. That's how I keep track of things. I'm a paper person, so I write things down. And then I mail these kits out always the week before class. So this class is February, uh, February October 28th. Um, and I mail out the kits around the 22nd. So, hi, Colleen. I got you on here, too. So, you guys... Anybody who's telling me now that they want to sign up for class will connect afterwards. Either place the order, use the host code, and tell me that, or PayPal me, friends. You guys, it's $20 for the cash option. If you send money via PayPal, it's got to be PayPal friends and family. If you don't send it PayPal friends and family, you have to add on a dollar because it's, there's a convenience fee then. Um, if you pay through my website, it's $21 if you use your credit card. But I take Venmo, um, Zelle. A check, you guys, a lot of you guys send checks yet, and that's awesome, checks are great. You just have to get my address then to send a check. So you guys, the cash option is $20, just so you know. If you go through my website or use a credit card to pay for it via my website or like PayPal um, invoice, like if a PayPal uh, good or service, it's $21, okay? I hope that makes sense. So these are the cards, you guys. So, all right, so. That is the fun fold, and that is February 28th. Now, you guys are gonna laugh because I, I put this class on the same calendar day, so October 28th, as Ink, Paper, Scissors. <laughs> the October Ink, Paper, Scissors featuring the Whimsy and Wonder bundle, um, or suite of products, was also February 28th. And somebody pointed out to me about two months ago, and I'm like, oh, shoot, how did I do that? I did that. So now this is the October Ink, Paper, Scissors, but you guys, it is actually November 4th, but I'm calling it 
the October ink, paper, scissors because it was officially the, it was supposed to be for October. So there are in fact two ink, paper, scissors in November. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. Um, so Kathy Jackson, I have you down here too for the fun folds. So I have you. Hi, Wendy Kruger. So here's another one, you guys. And this one I have. So this one for ink, paper, scissors That is the inside. Um, how this one works is, I know I keep saying February 28th, Angela. I have no idea why I'm saying February. It just blows my mind that I am even thinking February. You guys, it's October 28th. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out on that. Maybe I'll think about it before I talk next. Um, so October 28th, this one's November 4th. Um, this is not a class you can get for free with an order, you guys. This is fee-based because it's a product-based class. You get product with this class. So it's $30 if you pay cash or check or like a cash form of payment. It's $30 mailed. You'll get a pack of embellishments and a spool of ribbon, the entire roll of ribbon. It includes the snowflakes. It includes everything you need. You just need to have some tree stamps here. Hi, Ethel King. So in this case, some trees. Now, if you don't have this whimsy stamp set, but you have trees, that could work, you guys. Otherwise, all of this die cutting and embossing back here, all that die cutting, that little pink thing, like all of that. Hi, Sharon. Um, so you just have to have some trees for this one and some sentiments. So if you're worried about not having the exact stamp set, it's okay. Um, this one has ornaments hanging down um, and the inside looks like that. So it has, that's how I decorated. So this class is November 4th. It's $25 for porch pickup or it is $30 mailed for the cash option. You go to my website, you guys, and pay. With the credit card, it's $31 because of the dollar convenience fee. Um, <laughs> Brenda thinks I'm getting married on February 28th. Yo, oh, that's a nice thought, Brenda, but I'm not, you know, like that means Tyler would have to propose because I don't think I would propose to Tyler. We talked about this on a live that I need to make a little, well, maybe it wasn't a live. We talked about making a little pull tab card that I would give to Tyler and it would, you would pull it and it would say, will you marry me underneath the pull tab? Maybe I talked about this at the creative convention and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I really want him to ask me if he's going to ask me, right? So, but nice thought. February 28th is a good day. I'm sure that would be a good day to get married. <laughs> so, but yes, okay. That's enough to talk about that. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, this is the whimsy class. All right. So the ornaments are actually stamped, Laura. So the whimsy and wonder stamp set contains these ornaments and they are stamped and they are, um, they are then colored in. So you guys, uh, Sandra just um, emailed me a question. Uh, I got to remember to answer that. So, okay, perfect. So you guys, those are what's, that's coming up for the next like two weeks, two and a half, three weeks. It's time to RSVP to the ink, paper, scissors and the fun folds so that I can um, start knowing how many kits to make. Okay. So hi, Nanette. All right. Hi, Judy Bobo. Judy Bobo, was it you that has some sort of caller screening on your phone when, when a person calls you? I'm wondering if that was you who I called and it had some sort of a screening. So, all right, you guys, Monday night is mystery night, okay? So the clue number one is posted. Um, it is posted in the um, description or like the event details on Facebook. So if you go to the event section on Facebook for the page, or if you go to cardsbycrispy.com, if you go to the events calendar and you click in the event for Monday the 20, wait, what is it? Monday the 18th, then you guys should be able to um, um, get into that. I just remembered that I have one more class. It's the cutest Halloween class. And I don't even know where all the cards are. <laughs> When I have to get up to go get something, you guys, I have the cutest Halloween class too. Um, it's four Halloween cards. I don't know why. They must be upstairs. I was just um, cutting and prepping for them last night. So um, <laughs> so Lynn Beasley, the screen phone thing was you. I want to talk to you about what you have for the um, screening of your phone. Like I know when I called you, it was, it, it was either you or Judy Bobo, I thought. So we'll figure that out. Um, Hi, Terry. So you guys, I have the cutest Halloween cards hanging up on the board over there. When I have a chance, I'll run over and grab them because you guys, I have, um, I over forecasted on that one because I have like about 12 kits left and the class is going to be uh, in a week. It's next week, Thursday. So kits need to get in the mail 
this week if you guys want them in time for class next week. So, yes, mm -hmm. Melanie's back home for mystery night. Woohoo! Hi, Marilyn. Thanks for sharing. You guys, yeah, I appreciate you guys sharing the video. It's awesome that you can share me with your friends because I think then the more people that are stamping together, the, the, the merrier we are, right? <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, you know what? I'm going to flip this down and I'm going to run and grab those cutest Halloweens. This is what we're going to work on tonight. So, you can prepare for that. just remembered where the cards are they're not even made yet so this is the cutest you guys these are adorable I don't know if you don't get into Halloween or not but oh my gosh if you don't if you get into Halloween a little bit like this one I loved that the green this is perfect for somebody who loves green for Halloween all you guys need is a sentiment and then the cutest Halloween has a skull in it it has a cat and so this one opens like that so you got a cat there's a little spider web back there this one is the pumpkin. So there's four different stamps in the cutest Halloween stamp set. A pumpkin, a cat, a skeleton, and then there's the boo's the boo here. Hey boo. So you and I when I designed the cards, I went for purple, green, orange, and pink because the designer paper has all those different colors in it. So if you guys want to, um, Julie's coming a little bit late, but that's okay. Hi Janet. Um, if you guys, these are so pretty. Um, and the class is next week, so you guys would have these in time to make them and send them out to people who would really love a Halloween card. So I tried to use all the different sentiments from the stamp set. But again, if you don't have some of those exactly, you can make it work without having those. They're, they're cute even without those. So for people that don't have the exact stamps and you're worried about that, you could definitely make these cards work without having that stamp set. So um, that's the cutest Halloween class. Okay, so I'm glad I, <laughs> wow, I have like three more classes coming up in the next two weeks. Okay, I really appreciate you guys' support. Like every class that I have, there's a large number of people that attend them. And so that just keeps me going, you guys. Like I love having classes, but what's even more fun is that when I create and design cards that you guys take classes with me and it gives me a reason to cut more paper and share that creativity with you guys. So, oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi, Brenda Little. All right. Roll call, you guys, for the monthly card class for October. We have Sandy Wicklander, Kathy Groves, Barb Barco, Deanne Estelle, Diane Bogenhagen, Carmen Melendez, Judy Bobo, Bonnie Gravelin, Jennifer Jones, Joyce Dombrowski, Pam Newhauser, Most Dites, Ann Bellinger, Tammy Steckling, Angela Knutson, Rachel Horsch. Judy Kruger, Lynn Beasley, Leslie McMinn, and Ruth Miller. So Ruth Miller, you placed an order, you used the host code, and it was just over $35. So these cards went to you, and you probably didn't even know it. But I, I'm like, well, you used the host code, and it was over the minimum amount. So you guys, even if you place an order and you're not thinking about getting a class, I try to reach out to anybody who places a random order with me. And if you use the host code, I say, what class would you like? So she didn't even know she probably got these in the mail. <laughs> so, all right. So you guys, we had got 21 people and I have one kit that's up for grabs yet that the first person that tells me they're interested, I will, I'll have that in the mail to you soon. Um, so yeah, we'll do a door price drawing for um, those people who place orders to get the cards for free after we're done with class. All right. So, and I have just to recap too, I have Penny, Laura, Kathy, Colleen, and Kathy. So two Kathy's with C's, both my Kathy's with C's. Um, I have you guys, I'll add you to the fun folds and we'll connect tonight, tomorrow, sometime this weekend about um, payment. Hi, Naughty Nancy. Naughty Nancy's coming to this class in person with me on, it's actually Wednesday. So, yep, Naughty Nancy, you're signed up for Wednesday. All right, so let's flip down and we're going to see here what, um, what we're going to be doing. So, you guys... I have to go in the order of progression of the, um, the holidays. So we're going to go Halloween and then Thanksgiving, and then we'll do the Christmas card last, okay? So we'll work up to the Christmas card with the Shaker Dome here. So the Halloween one is awesome, you guys. I had so much fun. I actually designed this card for the Summer Creative Escape, which was in August, and all those cards got used in my monthly cards. And so I'll let that sit here so you guys can see that as I'm working on it. And the stamp set that I used for this one is called Frightfully Cute. But honestly, <laughs> the only thing I really use from the stamp set is the moon and the sentiment. And then on the inside, 
I use less trickin' more treatin', which is from the stamp set as well. And for those at home that if you don't have this stamp set and you don't have the, like the moon, you could actually sponge the edges of the moon with yellowy ink and that would be perfectly great as well. The only ink that I use, you guys, I referenced this. It says great pad. I'm like, <laughs> it's a good pad. <laughs> My mementos can be sketchy, but that one's a good memento. So for this one, there's not much stamping to do. What's awesome are all the little things that you will get in your kit. You guys, I have to disclaimer, I tried, so these cute little stars, they come in a pack that looks like this. And there's small ones, big ones, orange, purple, and black. And it was a really pain in the butt to like get everybody a little combination. But I tried to give everybody in their kits a combination of small and large and then every of the, like all three colors and some you got multiples of. So I gave everybody, I think five stars are in your kit. So just be very careful opening up because like, look at that, they, they come off. So that little guy's supposed to be over there and they're very staticky. So just be careful opening up your kit when you take everything out of the envelope. And we'll start on this one first. So you guys, the base for this card is pumpkin pie. <laughs> it's orange, it's pumpkin pie. <clears throat> and it is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. So all you should have to do is fold that. You guys, I always score your card bases for you so you don't have to worry about when you fold them. Grab your bone folder and burnish the edges. Okay. Now, you're going to wonder why do you have so much stuff? So you only have one yellow piece. You don't have two. Um, I noticed that that one has a piece missing on it. That's probably why I stuck it in there. But you have here a circle, a big circle that is embossed with some stars. Let's see if you guys can see that. There's some stars on there. That is from an embossing folder that's called Star Crossed. And it's in the holiday mini catalog. You can see here my circle. <laughs> I don't know if you can catch that. There it is. You can see there's a circle. This embossed about a hundred circles. And so you can tell it's been loved. And so that's where I, I, I made sure the circle was small enough that it would all fit in that corner right there. So that, hi Bonnie Kelly. So that's where that came from with star crossed embossing folder. And the circle, this one comes from the layering circles. So that's one piece. This little guy here, so this stamp set has some matching dies. Oh, that's the cloach dies, hang on. It has this tree. The tree comes from this set. So you guys, in your kit, you have a little tree. And then the circle, this actually got, got cut from that. There's a little fence in here. And if you guys can see, it's black glitter paper. That is almost off a of back order. Hi, Cindy Runtree, thanks for sharing. Um, you guys will have to take some time. Anna die cut all of these pieces. So a round of applause. Hi, Arliss. A round of applause for Anna and Pat for helping die cut and emboss. Anna does all this little picky stuff. And I tell her she does not need to pick out any of the little bits and parts that you guys were all capable of doing that ourselves. So there's a little fence, but it's awesome because it's, it's actually really, it's a glittery fence because it's black glimmer paper. That comes two 12 by 12 sheets that are in the holiday mini catalog. I made a little mess. Um, the other thing that is in here is this little tag. So that came from this die set. That spider web is amazing. I didn't use it on this card, but that's where the spider web is from this cutest Halloween card class. That's where the spider web com comes from. So it's frightfully, frightful tags. And hi, Feline. And that's about what I use. There's another little cute tag in there. There's some stars, but the dies are awesome. Yes, Anna is our superhero. She's amazing. You guys will have a piece of gingham ribbon that is about six inches, and then you'll have a bow. I made all your bows for you guys. So that comes from this bundle, or the suite is the cutest Halloween. That's the black and white gingham ribbon. So you guys have your double bow. Oh, Feline, we'll need to talk. I know that we need, so Feline and Kay both uh, won the baskets for the MS benefit a couple weeks ago, and they both won private classes with me. So Feline, we got to look at the calendar to find a day and a time that we can, you know, probably in, I'm thinking November. Um, hi, Mary Ellen. Um, we'll get together in November um, and figure out when we can get together with you and a couple friends for a private class. 
Okay, so you guys have two pieces of black and you're wondering, well, why are there two blacks? And it's because I love double matting on the inside of the card. So you have a piece, two pieces of black. They're both four by five and a quarter. And your inside white is three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. And so that's for your inside. And then your DSP is five and one sixteenth by three. So you, this is six by six paper. So you get two of them out of one. And that's gonna go off to the side over here. And I think I'm gonna trim a little bit. Mine looks a little bit long and I like it to see a little bit more black. So you guys, when you get your kits for me and if something's like a little hair long or a little hair short, <laughs> Just take and trim a little bit off if you need to. Um, so sometimes that DSP, like that will look better just having a little bit more black showing on there. And actually I'm gonna do just a hair more. So, all right. So that's what you guys all have in your kits that are making cards with me at home. And the first things we can do, let's see. We can get a little, we can get this glued down. Um, this put back, um, Yes, Debbie, you bought the dies that just for the spider web. You know, I would do the same thing. <laughs> so, all right, so this designer paper, when I cut that, I wanted to make sure my stripes were going horizontally versus vertically. So that's what I've got going on. And we can go ahead and grab tear and tape. More Halloween cards. I know, how many of you guys make Halloween cards? Give me lots of hearts if you make Halloween cards. Um, or thumbs ups if you do Halloween cards. I'm really curious because I will tell you that over the last three years, I always do the sweet class for Halloween in October. And I'll tell you, it's the least attended class that I have over all these years. It's always very low attendance. And so I made less card kits for the Halloween class than I do for other classes. And I'm, wonder, I'm wondering like, oh my gosh, am I gonna be able to, to have these all get filled up and used? So look at all these hearts, you guys do. Okay, good. Penny loves Halloween. So you guys, I have about 12 kits unaccounted for for the Halloween, the cutest Halloween class that's coming up next week. So if you didn't sign up for that, those cards are adorable. <laughs> so, all right, and they're kind of like time sensitive, so. You know, you know, if you make them after the fact, then you got to save them for next year. So, oh my gosh, so many of you guys make Halloween cards. That's awesome. Uh, Debbie said she made, oh, I did this backwards. <laughs> I made a waterfall Halloween card for my daughter. Still need to make one for your niece and nephew. There you go. Oh, and Brenda makes Halloween cards too. That's awesome. Okay, so good. I'm glad you guys, I love orange with black. And this paper right here is one of my favorites from that designer series paper. Okay, so that's about all we can do on here, you guys. If you wanna get glue happy, this is what you can do. Cause now we need to get a little stamping done before we can continue assembling. So we need to stamp these couple things. So how the moon works. So my, I used crushed curry, but my crushed curry is really dark. And so I wanna make sure, hi Karen. I wanna make sure that I stamp off. And can you see how dark it is? So the thing is though, that it's so many people struggle trying to line this up. So what I would highly recommend is, you know, there's the rough side is the back and then the rolled side is the top. So putting the rolled side down, I just line it up right on my stamp like this and just use my fingers to press around to get the ink to transfer to the paper. It's upside down stamping guys. I know it's backwards, but you will get your moon in there so much easier than trying to put the stamp that way. So. Um, if you don't have this moon stamp, so that's what the moon looks like on there. It just adds a little bit of depth. Um, my mom said you could just, she's like, just sponge the edges. You could take your sponge and just sponge the edges with yellow ink just to make it look like there's depth to it. But that's what I did on this one. Um, and then I have a moon on the inside up near the top. Let's put the little dots going that way. Okay. So that's what I've got for the crushed curry. And then, yeah, you can see here, when you did that upside down, it get, you can center it so much better than trying to flip it the other way. Okay, now some sentiments. So I've got my black ink pad and I actually have here less trickin' more treatin'. One of the things I like to do is just see how it's gonna stamp, if it's gonna be straight. Okay, so it's a little bit crooked, so I know that. Then I bring it down a hair. Okay, so 
You guys, it's practicing stamping before you actually put it to your actual card. And then hopefully you get it straight by the time you try <laughs> the third time. Okay? So less chicken, more treatin'. If you don't like it, you guys can always flip it over and put it on the other side. And then the other thing that gets stamped is the Happy Halloween to you. So you have a tag and the back side sometimes has little pieces from the plastic plates. You can just scrape them off. What I sometimes recommend, you know, you always recommend practicing here, but if you only get two chances to make it right, like there it's crooked, Sometimes I'll stamp the back of my label before I actually stamp the front. So I need to compensate. For some reason, it's going high. So what I'll do is, and on white paper is really hard to see, so I'll go like this. And I'll practice on the back. Okay, so if I don't do good on the front, at least the back turned out good. But what I try to do is make sure I do that on the front now. Kind of remember how I held the stamp. If it was crooked or if I needed to change anything. Hi, Yolanda. All right, you guys, by the fourth time I stamped it, I got it the straightest. I'm so excited. Yay. Practice, you guys. I don't ever go straight for my cardstock. Hi, Diana. So don't go straight for the cardstock. It, it, it practice. So we've got our moon. That's garbage now. So now we can work on a little bit of assembly. Hi, Linda Hodge. Okay. So. We've got a white mat here, which is going to go on the inside, black mat. And this is going to, I'm going to prep. You guys, I do a couple preppings at the same time. Oh, we can't do this quite yet. Hang on. Set that off to the side. I have a little trick that I have for my, my stars. So I got glue happy there, but I caught it. Practice first. Yes, you guys. Okay, so you've got that, and now you can put a little glue on that one and so what's super cool is that I know that sometimes you guys don't even put mats in your cards I always will put a mat on a card if it's not a white or a vanilla base but to do a double mat just makes it look even the wow factor like times 10 okay I wanted to get glue happy and glue my moon down but I just remembered that there's one other trick can you guys see the stars back here you can can you see the stars on this one? Not as much. And I have to go grab it off the table, but you have to use a white ink pad to do that. <laughs> I had Halloween bingo last night, so we used this white ink pad for that, and it was still sitting on the table. So. There's a white ink pad that we sell, and I have a little sponge dauber. And I know it looks pink, but I promise it won't be pink on paper. <laughs> so I always like tap off a little bit. And what you could do, hi Jeannie Parker, woohoo, thanks for sharing. Um, you could start on the back and see how it looks on the back. You can see that a little ink went on there. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna just lightly hover over the top to get the stars white. If you press really hard, you're gonna get the white ink in the recessed area. And you can see it whenever I get ink, I always kind of tap off to the side so that it's not so stark and like sharp looking. And I don't know if you guys can start to see where you see that they have more, they pop more than over on this side. I didn't do that side yet. So I'm just hovering over the top and adding a little bit of white to my stars to make them look a luminescence. <laughs> okay. To help make illuminate them. I don't know. Can you see them right there a little bit? Okay. In person, you guys could totally see this. I promise. But that's one of the uses for the white ink pad. And actually, we use it on this other card too. So we'll set that over here for now. Now we can go ahead. <laughs> My glue is still wet, so. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do, hi Lisa Nealon, we're gonna put our little moon off to the side, our moon over Miami here. Okay, and then you guys have a fence, and the fence is flat, and we have a tree. So the fence, I did do that flat. Now, if you guys at home have this fence and you have the adhesive sheets, 
you are more than welcome to make your fence into a sticker. But I don't put them on, I don't make them into stickers because to make 60 little fence stickers would be a pain in Anna's butt. <laughs> so, so we give you just the fence and all you do is just line it up with a little bit of liquid glue and you guys should be golden. So this is gonna go right along the bottom here. I have the edge of it just hitting the bottom side of the moon. Okay, and then this circle is popped up with dimensionals and this is a great time to use your black dimensionals. And I'll put like probably four of them back here, like that. And I do pop up that tree too. I'll show you that in a second, but let's put that over here. It's kind of hanging out like that. And then our tree. So this right here is the trunk. It's just thick enough that you can fit some dimensional behind there. So what I'm gonna do is cut a little sliver of my black. You don't wanna use a white dimensional because you guys will definitely see a white dimensional peeking out behind there. Or if you use the black dimensional behind your tree, behind that trunk, if you cut that skinny enough, it should be good. But when you're looking at it from the side, you don't see any white, you actually see the black. And I honestly do not put any adhesive on the top of that. That's gonna be sitting pretty good. I wanna make sure that my gnarly branches are hanging out in front of the moon so they get offset a little bit, just like that. And then my sentiment guy right here. So what's happening is that this is popped up and then I gotta be careful because, hi Melanie. I want to put a dimensional here and here, but I don't necessarily need to here because the tree is helping to pop it up. So you guys, sometimes you use liquid glue and dimensionals when you're adhering. So we're going to just go like that. And that kind of meets right there. I was trying to line up with my black line there so it looks straight actually. That's what I was trying to do there. And then you want to grab a glue dot and I've got this cutesy little double bow made out of the gingham ribbon and that can get snuck right in the corner there and then sometimes if a tail goes like crazy um, in a direction you don't want it to go <laughs> just grab another glue dot and find out where it looks really nice you're gonna put that glue dot right there and then grab your ribbon scissors and you can trim your tails that one looked like it was okay. I don't think he needed help. But for moral support, we could put a little glue dot behind him so that his buddy isn't left alone. But there's that so far, you guys, okay? But we're not done because we have these little cute stars. So these are adhesive back stars that are in the mini catalog and they are in black and purple and orange. And this is where the pokey tool comes in really handy. Um, so I, I would put the black ones over where you can see them off on the orange and then a purple one could look really cute there and then another purple one here. And so you either got two black and two purple and an orange or you got two orange and two purple and a black. I mixed it up that everybody got like five total. And so one, two, three, four, and we'll put another one in orange right there. So the stars just add to it. They're so cool. And then if you open it up, we've got our inside. You got yourself a cute little Halloween card. Now, Stella cannot be on a break all the time. <laughs> so I would Stella the, oh my gosh, that wasn't good. What just happened there? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So I don't think that ever happened to me before. So the whole cover came out. So grab your Stella pen and you can make your gnarly tree here a little bit more glittery with the Stella pen. All right, you guys, I don't know if you know it too, but you could also, you can Stella your ribbon if you want, just to give that a little bit of sparkliness. There you go. Okay, pop in there. Okay, so we've got one card done. Our Halloween card. So this will go to somebody next week. 
Cute stars are awesome. I tried to use a lot of the stuff from the cute Halloween suite of products, but I just used a different stamp set then. Okay. So let's grab this and we'll put this. Oh, that little orange star. So if your star does not want to stick, what I would recommend doing is putting a little glue dot right where you want it to go. And that should help it stick. There. All righty. We are going to roll right into the Thanksgiving card then. You guys, I love making little double bows like that. They, they make me happy. <laughs> okay, before we continue, let's get our stamp here cleaned up. So you guys, this is the Purple Chamois. You can get this in the annual catalog. Um, it comes in like a little plastic sleeve that you just throw away, but you can take one of your old stamp cases and they fit perfectly inside the stamp case. And all that is is water in here, or you can get some of the stamp cleaner too and spray that. That conditions your stamps. So, okay. Let's move on. Oh, you guys, I forgot to show you cards. I got a few happy mail cards in the mail. They're right here. Hang on. I got to show them to you. This one came. Oh my gosh, you guys. So pretty. So I was holding the card like this, but then I realized that you could hold the card like this and it goes both ways. And when Lynn had her note in here, it was like this. So I think Lynn intended for the card to be opening like this. And it's so perfect because you can put it like this too. So Lynn, your card is just gorgeous. This is the Expressions in Ink um, flower. I believe that's where that came from. It's so cool. It was so bright and cheerful. I absolutely love it. So pretty. And then this one came from Karen, I believe. Karen Wettstein. Yes. So very cool flower. This little stamp set was from last year. It's so pretty. So thank you so much. Oh, and she did a double mat. Look at that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. And lastly, from Elaine. Elaine, this was awesome too. Um, she looked, Tyler looked at this card and he's like, what did she use? I'm like, those are called rivets. Those are a blast from the past. I have a lot of these little rivets all in Stampin' Up! Colors from like 15 years ago. <laughs> I love how she has like, it was white ink on black to make it look like chalk on a chalkboard. So pretty, Elaine. I love your card. So, all right. That's what I got for Happy Mail. Okay, so this one's done. Let's move on to our Thanksgiving card. All right. So, this one is using a set called Pretty Pumpkins. So, let's pull that one. Okay, Pretty Pumpkins. What's awesome about this, you guys, <laughs> always are the dies. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm becoming a die girl. <laughs> I love these dies. So, when I designed this card, I wanted to make sure that you guys could have it like basically clone my card and not necessarily have to have a lot of stamps. Um, yeah, Brenda Little's got some rivets in her stash. Oh yes, I have lots of sta rivets. Um, so I used the stamp here on the inside and it says, so thankful for you. And then if friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you. But there's also one in here that says gather together. And the dies that we used here are the copper foil. And then this is pretty pumpkin. So that's the bundle that was featured for this card. And we'll grab an only early espresso for ink is used, but re-inkers. I pulled in, you guys have never used this before. It's called soft sea foam. And you can hardly see it, but it's a really light green. And I pulled in pumpkin pie. And when I was working on this card, I had this vanilla background. So let's start first. You guys have an espresso piece, eight and a half by five and a half. And it's scored at four and a quarter. <clears throat> and the inside and the outside mats are the same size, four by five and a quarter. It's soft succulent embossed with a tasteful textiles embossing folder. And then the vanilla mat, okay? Oh, look at me, I have mine stamped already, haha, -ha. okay? And then you guys have, it's actually thick vanilla, thick, very vanilla, and it is die cut with the scalloped contours dies, Okay, so when I was working on this card, the copper foil was sitting here like this and the pumpkin was sitting here in front of it. And I thought, okay, well, how can we add a little color because it looked very blah. So if you don't have this at home, it's okay. Your card will still look beautiful if you don't have the color behind. But if you see on this card, there's a little bit of orange and there's a little bit of green up here. And what you gotta do is 
get that color on there first. In your kit, you also have two leaves and you have a little baby double bow that's made out of, let's see here so you can see it, it's made out of linen thread, so don't lose that. And then you guys also have three little genial gems and they're either two orange and a green or two green and a, an orange, the pale papaya or soft succulent. Okay, so first things first though, you wanna get, you wanna get your color on here because it needs to dry. Hi, Crystal McBride, if you stamp this and it's still wet, it will bleed all over the place and you don't want it to bleed. So we have here some aqua painters, uh, water painters. They used to be called aqua painters until a couple years ago. Now they're water painters. They're aqua, aqua, or water. They're, I call them both, okay? One, so they come in a pack of three and this one is a fan brush, so it's wider. And the other two are more, like that's a really fine tip. And then this one's more of a medium tip. So that's what we were using in class the other night. Hi, Mo. And so they're full with water. And what we have to do is use the reinkers. So you get yourself a clear block and you put a teeny tiny little drop. You guys, honestly, you don't need a lot. <laughs> I promise. Look, that's all you need. A little bitty, insy teensy little weeny yellow polka dot bikini in a green little drop right there. That's it. That's all we need. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do say stuff like that all the time, you guys. It reminds me of a movie from the 80s, I think. So you want to have a piece of paper towel nearby just in case. But what you do is you squeeze a little bit of this water onto the block. And what it does is it dilutes the ink. And if you go straight for that darkest area um, and put it on here, it'll be really dark. And you don't really want it that dark. If you look at this, it's just a soft little green area back there. Um, and so what you could do is practice over here and see what it looks like. Okay, it's really soft. So go back in here, dilute that, and you're just going to give yourself a little, little green wash background here. So the reason I use the thick vanilla paper is because I'm using water on it. If you use a thin paper, it soaks into it weird and it can make this like pilly thing happen to your paper. By using thick vanilla or thick white or the shimmery white, it really helps. And so what's gonna happen is this is wet right now and it needs a little drying time. And then when you're done with it, what you do is you just wipe out the brush and you can clean that off because we're done with it. And once you squeeze the color out, it should dilute the color out of the brush tip and then you can use the next color. And so on here, I've got some pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Again, you don't need a lot, just a little, little, t a little bit. Okay. And we're going to be putting the pumpkin underneath where this guy is going to go. So kind of eyeball it. There's no rhyme or reason, but you really want to dilute this one because the orange is really uh, sharp. So uh, we're just going to go a little bit there and a little bit more down there. And if you're curious of how it's gonna look, just put your pumpkin over the top. Oh, I got a little orange right over there. Oop, you can't really see it though. So, and just know that this pumpkin is gonna cover up some of it too. So if you're happy with where you have it, great. And if you want a little bit more, don't be afraid to just put a little bit more behind there. Okay, so squeeze out the brush. You can see that some of the orange is coming out and you just squeeze it until all the color's out of the brush and that's how you clean it out. And put the cover on. So I use the medium brush here versus that fine tip one. And then if you're done with that, you can just wipe that off. The less you use on there, the less you end up putting into the paper towel. So that's another, you guys, I did a coloring 101. That's one of the things you can do with your re-inkers. Okay, so this needs a little time to dry. In class on Monday night, everybody was, they were fanning themselves. It was awesome. So you give that a second to dry. Okay, and so what we can do is work on the assembling our card. So if you're at home and you want to stamp whatever sentiment you want there and you put your pumpkins here, you could take blends and color them in if you wanted. But we're going to leave them be. And whoever gets this card as a prize can go ahead and when they get it, they can color their pumpkins if they want to. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put our one mat on the inside. Oh my gosh. Oh, you guys, look what I did. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, I can swap them around. <laughs> okay, so you guys, when I do in-person class, I always 
leave the cards in the plastic and I put my insides on the back. So people in class just have to flip over and they don't have to take it out of the plastic and get ink on it or glue on my samples. And so <laughs> here I thought I was gluing the sample, you know, gluing that, but we're all good. Life is good. We're back on track. So you can understand why I had a little surprised reaction. Okay. <laughs> all right. So there's that. The other thing we can do is we can start to prep these. This is not dry. And what we have to do is when this is dry, it's got a little bit of waviness to it. So I can tell because we have to stamp our sentiment. But what we can do while we wait for that to dry is we can go ahead and put <clears throat> our leaves on. So we're going to use, I think, a white dimensional. And I'm just going to pop this one up. And that kind of just hangs out right over like that. I would Stella it. Let's see if the Stella pen opens up good. Oh, there it is. Okay, so you can go ahead and Stella this leaf. And then go ahead and Stella this one. There we go. And I did not pop that up. I just put a little liquid glue behind this one. So you got to be careful, though, because there's little sliver, like little slits in these leaves that are open. And so if you put too much glue... Uh, on the back of this, it'll ooze out through the top of the leaves and you don't really want that. So this guy right here, he kind of goes right around that the stem of the pumpkin. So it looks like it's wrapped around it. Okay, so we're gonna leave that sit like this. Oh man, we got a Stella this too, hang on. <clears throat> this pumpkin needs a lot of Stella. So grab your Stella pen and we can Stella this. Okay. Perfect, don't change them. All right, so we're gonna put that like that. Now, let's see where we're at. It feels a little damp to me yet, so we're just gonna go like this, and then we're gonna work on our bow here. So grab a little glue dot, and that can go right at the top of our leaf, and then you got your little baby double bow here. That can go right there. Normally, I would have this all being put down right away before I put all this stuff on, but we're, we're buying time for drying. So that's set. Okay, we're gonna give this 20 more seconds and we're gonna put So Thankful For You on here. So I used Early Espresso Ink for this one. We'll know if I stamp it too soon, you guys, because it will definitely bleed. Okay. The other thing, you guys, too, if you were in a rush, you could always get your heat tool, and you could blow your heat tool on here, and that will help to heat it up as well. All right. So now you've done this pretty bit of water coloring, so you don't want to risk messing anything up. So you could practice stamping your sentiment on here. And I'm gonna put that right there. So we've got a little bit of green ties in with the succulent. So the soft seafoam is not soft succulent. It's a little bit different. Hi, Jolene, hi, Lisa. But it's so soft that it really goes well with the soft succulent. And so far we're good here. So we're gonna put some dimensionals on this and pop this up so it's a little bit higher on the front of our card. Okay, we're good with those. I absolutely love these scalloped contour dies, you guys. <laughs> if you don't have them yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> they should be on your list. <laughs> They're so cool. They add so much to a card. Instead of just cutting a rectangle, to have that scallop and the stitching is awesome. So this is what we got so far. You got a little bit of green up here and a little bit of orange. <clears throat> so for this, <laughs> you guys might have to pick out little parts if you need to from the die cutting, but there we go. And I, I, this is another one where at home, if you had adhesive sheets, you could put them on the back of your foil before you go ahead and run it through your machine. But I will just random cherry pick different areas and adhere a little bit of liquid glue. If you're not good with the liquid glue, you could use the, um, there's a fine tip glue pen that looks like this. 
that people use that a lot too. So now this little guy is gonna go, actually it's the big guy, he's gonna go right off to the side here. And once you have them flat, don't push them around because that glue will smear all over. So, so Nanette, <laughs> that's so funny that you say that because that, that, that's when you can say my work here is done. <laughs> so it's like, it's so funny when you're looking through the catalog, there's so many reasons why you can come up with, oh, I don't need that set or I don't like that set. And all it takes is for you to say, like Angela said, I'm so good at that. And it's so true. You could be looking through the catalog and think, I don't need that because I don't like that one particular stamp or I don't like that one die. So then you don't look at the rest of what's in that stamp set. And then you overlook it and overlook it and overlook it. And all of a sudden you, you see somebody make something with it and you're like, oh, that is cool. I do like that. <laughs> so it's just, you know, and you know how many times you can look through a catalog and not see something and then all of a sudden and all it takes is one time and you're like you see it and it's like now I gotta have it and <laughs> you see one card made with the set and you're like oh now I need the set and that's all it takes sometimes you guys I am the same way like all it takes is one card and I think I need that set <laughs> now it's fine to get that set now you just have to make sure you use it okay Somebody asked me the other day, I think it was Pat Butts, she said, well, do you use all your stamps? And it's like, you know, now that I teach classes and I do this kind of stuff, I do. I use almost every set that I purchase. Because you guys, I don't purchase everything. I don't need to purchase things that I don't think I'll use. Like, why, right? You guys don't buy things you don't like. So I don't buy everything because that's like, why should I don't need to buy everything if I don't like it. So same thing. But now that I... I do classes, I pull out all the sets and I use, you guys, if you've been following me for a while now, you see I don't try to duplicate things and it gives me purpose to use all the things that I do get. <laughs> so that's the main thing, you guys, is one thing to buy things, but it's another thing to use them. So it's always, I love it when I, hi Jean Maxwell, I love it when I hear you guys that are you're using things or you show your pictures of what you're using. That's so awesome. That makes me feel good. And then lastly, we have here some genial gems. And I love using up little sheets here that are left. So we're going to use that one there. Put that guy up there. And there's two left. And we'll put one little guy right there. Odds, you guys. Odd numbers is the best. So if you wanted, I gave everybody three. But if you're at home and you have these genial gems and you want to add more, you could probably put two more on. Find two more spots. But So again, I'm reading Judy Bobo's comment. You'll find amazed at all the things you see. Yeah, turn your catalog upside down. Oh, yes. <laughs> so here's the thing, you guys. Oh, there's the card. Sorry, I was reading comments. <laughs> so here's the thing. We all have acquired... You guys, have, if you've seen my my inside my hive here at all, um, it's supposed to be use it or not just collect. So we, we all buy things, and we buy stamp sets a lot. And one of the things that... Uh, my former upline, she's resigned since, but she has always, I remember one of the things she taught me is don't always buy the stamp sets, buy the consumable stuff. Like a lot of us are demonstrators trying to stay active and you do the $300 on a quarterly basis. And if you keep buying stamps and keep buying stamps and keep buying stamps, you have a great collection of stamps. But what happens when you want to use them and you don't have papers and you don't have the inks and you don't have adhesives and you don't have... Um, coloring tools. And so buying consumable things is good too. It's not always just about buying stamp sets. Like, cause once you get a nice little collection of stamp sets, now use them, right? So that's my little lecture for you guys tonight. Use what you have. That's why I love mystery cards so much with you guys is because I don't want you to go out and buy new stuff. I want you to use what you have and I don't care what it is. Use it. Like pull out that pack of paper that you bought. These are what we've done so far. Pull out that pack of paper you bought 10 years ago and you're afraid to cut because you'll never be able to buy it again. You know what? They make new pretty things every day. <laughs> Love it, chop it is I think the, the movement that we have going on. Okay, so last but certainly not least is our wintry card here. Okay, so this set, it's a shaker card, guys. We got some subtle sequins going on, sh subtle shimmer sequins. And so that's what we got for an inside little house. Okay, so what do we got? This one is the 
cloche set. It's called Classic Cloche. And I showed the dies earlier by accident, but they're right here. So it has this dome and the trees. It's got the ledge and the detailed ledge and some birdies, this little house village scene, some branches, and then here's the stamp set. And you guys, there's no stamping on the outside. <laughs> oh man, there's no stamping. I just realized, I, I mean, I realized that when I designed it, but I'm like, huh, okay, there's no stamping on the outside, but there's stamping on the inside. So we'll do a little stamping on the inside so that you guys can get some sentiments on here. So the ink colors I use for this one are navy and the memento. So let's put these back and there's a little village there and we need the little house set here. So we'll need those. So just three stamps are all we're using on this one. So we can put these all back. In your kits, you guys are gonna have lots of pieces. Okay, I was nice to you. <laughs> all your sequins got put into a little poly bag that's like this big and it should be enough sequins for inside your card. So when you open up your kits, you shouldn't have all these sequins going all over the place. Um, can you mail them and what's the best way? Honestly, you guys, this is more than a quarter inch thick. So you guys, if you go to the post office, they have these little slots that you gotta put your, um, your uh, envelopes through. And if it's more than a quarter inch, which is right there, you guys, that's, that's a quarter inch. That dome is more than a quarter inch. So I would definitely advise against putting this in an envelope and putting it in the mail. It's gonna get squished. Uh, um, just curious how many blocks do I own? Maybe like 40 or 30. I keep like 10 of them upstairs in my design room and I probably have 30 down here. So yeah, so what happens, it's a good question, Laura. When I do a class, I have this class set up, but then I had bingo in the middle and I don't like to have to like rearrange blocks and stamps. So I have enough blocks to do up to three classes at one time because that happened when we read three classes in a week. And then I had to do them again later. So I have maybe 10 or 12 D blocks and about eight B blocks, eight C blocks. Yeah, I probably have about 40 blocks. So, so back to Brenda's question though. Um, I would do a padded envelope, honestly. And it's gonna cost you about $3.50 to mail it, depending on where, you know, you guys are, we're based off of regions in the United States. So if you are in the Midwest, then that's cheaper than if I'm mailing something to California or mailing it to the East Coast. So depending on how far and how much it weighs is based, that's what's used to base how much you pay for postage. And for this, you guys, I would use, honestly, I would tell you that I would use this. And I know it's crazy, but it's like a bubble mailer. And so you could put the card in here in an envelope, but um, I wouldn't, and then it's got some extra padding and protection and that card would fit in here. And to mail something like this with just a card that's less than an ounce, I bet it's only like $3. When you get to like six ounces and seven ounces, you guys, it gets to be like $4, $5 to mail something. So um, I hope that answers your question, Brenda. I would definitely not put this, if you guys see, like there is an envelope this size and you put that in here, that will definitely get squished and you don't want it to crack or break while it goes through the mail. Um, oh yeah, Kathy, I would say, <laughs> oh, you know what? If you put hand stamp on it, um, but it's still gonna be more than a quarter inch thick. So the problem is how much postage are you gonna pay? So if you're going to mail something like this in an envelope and you put a post-it note over it and you put hand stamp on it and you take it directly to your post office and have them hand stamp it, you might be okay. But I don't know what you're gonna pay for postage. That's a US Postal Service question. I'm, I don't know, I can't say. I don't know, I would, I would personally always hand deliver a card like this is what I would do. They're beautiful and they're awesome, but I wouldn't want it to get broken or squished in the mail. Oh, Sandy loves when she gets a pink bubble package from me. <laughs> it's like Christmas, yeah. Um, yeah, and so Anna's like, she said you'll be charged parcel. Yep, you will be. So that's why I would put it in a padded envelope and just pay you know, a little bit more and have it sent parcel. So uh, yeah, so okay, what do you guys have here going on in your kits? You guys have a lot of bits and parts, okay? So you have a mantle that is in basic gray. Um, you also have um, 
this I'm reading comments as they come through. I would pay two ounce stamp. You know, Kathy, I don't know if the two ounce stamp will do it. Your best bet would be to ask the post office. And I, you know what? I don't like to ask the post office because I feel like you always get different answers. So personally, I, I would go to my mom and dad's post office, which is out in the country because they're more flexible and nicer, easier to work with than the big city post office. So um, basic gray is eight and a half by five and a half. You guys scored it four and a quarter. I kept them all the same for this one. You guys know me. I'm a traditional A2 kind of card girl. <laughs> yeah, so that happened to me just recently, Anna. Melanie Foy sent me um, an envelope, and it came, and it was like three ounces, and it was thick, like a parcel. And so what happened is it came that I owed money. So you guys, I have to tell you that. If you ever get a card from me where you get that I that you owe money. I apologize always up front. I always weigh every one of my cards and I make sure it's not more than a quarter ounce, more than a quarter inch thick. But if you ever get where postage is due from me and you want me to give you the money for the postage, you just have to ask me. I don't ever want you guys to get cards from me and you have postage due. Um, it happens though. So just know that it does happen. And so you can just think you pop things in the mail and the person's going to get it. They may get it, but you're right, Anna they may have to pay as well. So just a little side note. Okay. Um, are not very helpful and nice. Oh my gosh, Cindy, go to a different one then. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know how far away the other, the no, the most local one is, but yeah, you definitely, um, you definitely want to make sure it's right. So the person isn't charged. So, okay, you guys, let's see what we got here. We don't need those. We did something different. So, and I gave you guys so you guys, there's a lot of stuff in the kit. So you have a piece of white. This white is your inside. Don't confuse it with the white on the outside here. Um, oh, Linda, your package didn't arrive yet. So it'll arrive. It always does. I don't think that I've ever gotten a package return that I've sent since I started mailing out kits. Um, you guys, this one is a Knight of Navy. It's really hard to see it, but it is stitched. There is stitching around it. It's a stitched rectangle. So that one will go down first. Please ignore this. This um, Originally, I thought about putting extra snow hills in. You could hardly see them once you got the whole card finished. So it didn't pay uh, to actually have the extra snow hills. But know that if you guys do, there are snow hills that you could die cut in here. But you, by the time it got all full with the trees and the sequins, you can't even see them. So <clears throat> you got that layer. And then you've got this Knight of Navy layer that is embossed with... Two months ago. Oh my gosh, Debbie. You know that happened to me two Christmases ago. Um, my old boss mailed me something in December and I got it in February, three months later. So Linda, your package that I mailed you was a priority envelope package because you had like four things in it. So I'm sure it will arrive in the next day or two. Fingers crossed, right? But positive thoughts. So this is embossed here, you guys, with the snowflake embossing folder. Let's see if you can kind of see that. And so it was die cut first with the bell and then um, the snowflakes were embossed. You guys, I was um, I cut these three by four for you so that you um, would have a little bit easier time to work with. So I made mine just a little bit smaller and I have to like finagle with it. But basically, you just need enough of that. This paper is the Peaceful Cabin and it's that so pretty gray paper uh, with the snowflakes. Um, that will go behind here. So you have a piece that looks like this, okay? All you need to do is take your scissors and you're gonna make yourself a snow hill. Honestly, just go up and then kind of curve it. And you're just making yourself a rolling snow hill. If you want more of a hill, make it more of a hill. If you want less, you just do less. And if, honestly, if you want it more, you can just put a little bit more curve into it and put a little more curve into it. Yes, I love this paper too, Linda. It's awesome. So there you've got that. That's what you need to do with this. It's like a one and a quarter by three inch piece of white. You have to make yourself a snow hill. And that's gonna go back here. And then you guys have five trees. You have five trees and then you have this adorable glittery organ depot. That is from that peaceful cabin suite. I made everybody a double bow. And the other thing here is we need a Stella. So. This, it would be a good thing to get that Stella ing done right away on your trees. So you have five. There are, in here, there's a big tree, two mediums, three 
more mediums like there's two medium sizes and then there's four little guys oh there's actually six little guys there's so many trees uh so i only used five if you had more than that it looks too clustery and to use the little one it got washed away took 20 days for the car to arrive you know that happened to me with mary carl's about a year ago <clears throat> she lives 20 minutes from me and it took 10 days for her set of card kits to come in the mail we were starting to get worried and all of a sudden after about 10 days they showed up there they were okay so what do we want to do first let's <laughs> so this there is um embossing on here with the snowflakes and i want to do the same thing that i did with the stars i want to enhance the snowflakes so that you can see them better so i'm going to hold these up so you can do a side by side so you can kind of see some snowflake action on the right, but not really pronounced on the left. Okay, so you're gonna have to use the gray or the white ink pad. And so what happens with the snowflake embossing folder is that some of the snowflakes are popped up and some are like recessed down. And when they're recessed down, it's really hard to get the color on them. But just by hovering over the top of this, you can see that that snowflake over here is a little bit more pronounced than the rest of them. And you guys, the more you do, the darker, or the more white will go on. And then we're gonna go with this one over here. And there's actually little like bumples all over too. So you could go over those. And what you're doing is just making it look like a little bit frosty. Okay. So that's where these sponge daubers come really in handy, where if you use a sponge, it's less control over where you're going. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see this when I'm doing it, but they stand out so much more when you put a little bit of white on them. Okay, so I think that's enough for that, okay? So that's what the white ink pad, another use for that is that sponging over the top of embossed areas. Um, let's see if we can hold it on here. If you guys can see there, see? Now you can see how much they stand out. And I just ho hovered over them lightly just to give them some definition. Okay, I like doing that a lot. All right, <laughs> oh, let's do our inside stamping. So. Your bigger white piece. I had two people in class the other night that mixed up their white pieces. So you gotta be very careful. It's the larger piece that goes on the inside. And what we're stamping is, yeah, I know, and just like a little bit of stamping makes all the difference for those snowflakes. It makes them pop. Okay, so the outline for the house I did in black. And we're gonna put this little village down in the bottom. Oh, you guys like that. And you could really see it when I put the navy behind it. That by itself, it gets washed out, but there you guys could really see how it pops. I love it. Okay, I let it marinate for a second, so that's good. Now, that's it for the black. I'm gonna do navy. So these little houses, like the siding is in navy. This is hard to match up, you guys. <laughs> People didn't like me after this because you really, it's like you gotta hover around. I kind of go in a circle till I get it where I think I need to have it. And then I just shut my eyes and I go for it. <laughs> That's really kind of what I do. <laughs> so, all right. And then if you're off a little bit, it's really okay. <laughs> so those are hard, to, they, they're really hard to line up. And it says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Okay, I'm not a good singer, guys, but I'm a good stamper. How about that? <laughs> So there we go. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's gonna go right there. Okay, you guys, that's it for stamping. So Laura, if your navy paper, is it Stampin' Up paper or is it a different brand? Sometimes too, it depends where you have it stored. If you have it stored in a room that the sun, even though like your window shades are closed, UV light comes in everywhere and the sun colors things lighter. It bleaches them out. It does happen. So um, I keep all my papers stored in filing cabinets. So it's always closed up. So the, yeah, it depends too. There's There was a couple different, there was a not quite navy paper from back in the day as well. 
Um, but they they can over the years. I've gotten a, the Calypso Coral is one where one time I'll get one and then the next time I'll get another and they'll be slightly different. Okay, you guys, we got a lot of assembling. <laughs> so let's glue some things together and get less pieces out here. So, all right, inside and our navy here. We're gonna do those two first. Okay, so this one and this one. We're gonna get those put down first. Oh, your room is in a dungeon, that's awesome. So then you shouldn't have to worry about the sun getting to it. <laughs> oh, I love not quite navy. Yeah, Judy, that was one. Ah, you know what, Misty Moonlight though is very close to not quite navy, I think. You guys, we're, I'm doing the retro swap with, um, with like, there's 20 other people and I were doing the radically retro swap. It's in a couple weeks. Uh, and it has to be all Stampin' Up! product, but it's gotta be all retired, except for the colors. You could use current cardstock colors, but I pulled out Baroque Burgundy from like 20 years ago. I pulled out Baroque Burgundy and I'm using Tranquil Tide and Tip Top Taupe. Do you guys remember those colors? <laughs> Okay, so then this guy can get glued down as well. Um, and then I have, I don't know if you guys remember, there was this these Naturals paper, Naturals Ivory and Naturals White. And they had little speckles uh, in them and they were like little confetti. I love it. So, okay, so this is going to go right here. Now, you guys, don't worry. I'm still good. <laughs> we're going to work on this part next. But, all right, so... Oh man, how do we wanna do this so that I can explain? So you guys, I gave you guys a three by four piece. So your three by four piece is a little bit longer. So that's good. You guys don't have to worry so much about lining this up as I do. So, um, Baroque, yeah, Handsome Hunter. Do you guys remember Handsome Hunter? Okay, so I'm gonna set this right about here. Um, and I'm gonna build my background scene is what I'm gonna try to do. So this little snowy hill will need to get adhered on here. I'm trying to think how high this needs to go. It's gonna go something like, I wanna see more of my gray. So my snow hill is gonna be something like here, right about here. So I'm, I'm gonna hold it. Oh my God, do you guys see that? I'm like, okay, it's gonna go right about there. So I'm gonna lift this up slightly and get some glue under here. And then that should be good. So. What I'm trying to do is making sure that my DSP is high enough up and that my snow hill is right about there, okay? So that's what I'm doing first. That all is gonna be hidden back there anyways. You're never gonna see this. Okay, then what now we can do is we're gonna put our trees down. So you guys have five trees. So they all need to fit in this general bell shape. And so that big guy's gonna go there. <laughs> Laura, now you need to have the set. Oh, I know the set is so cool. Oh, Tranquil, oh, Tip Top Taupe. Tip Top Taupe was an in color. If you guys remember, there was a color called Watermelon Wander, or Watermelon Wander, whatever. Uh, there was Tip Top Taupe. There was a yellowy color too, and a bluish color that year. Okay, so now we have a little tree. These trees are awesome. You guys, if you don't want the stamp set, you the dies, all of this is basically done with the dies. You guys could stamp whatever you want on the inside. <clears throat> so that tree's gonna go back there. And now you've got one more big one. So we got a small one here. And he's gonna go right about there. So I'm just building a little tree farm here. So about the trees, <clears throat> you guys probably can't see it, but I did dimensionalize the tops of those two in the front. But what happens is sequins will get, like they get stuck down behind there. So honestly, I don't know if you really wanna do that, but. You don't have to. I'm gonna actually do this card and I'm gonna do it flat. And, all right, Penny, we'll catch you later. <laughs> you still have some watermelon wonder, awesome. Yeah, Debbie's got those in her stash too, you guys. I have almost every color of paper for the last 20 years, like to some amount, not like full packs of everything, but um, I have a hard time letting go of things. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't figured that out yet. <clears throat> All right, so our trees are glued. Now what we wanna do is you guys have your shimmer subtle sequins. What I like to do when I do shaker cards is I want some snowflakes to be flying in the sky and not all down falling down. So I put five dots of glue 
there. And what we're gonna do is find them and we're gonna glue them down. Yeah, <clears throat> so Laura, I got rid of my older ink pads. I never used to buy, I never used to buy re-inkers. I'm, I don't know why, I'm dumb. I, now, if you tell me why you should buy a re-inker, I would listen. I guess 20 years ago, I never thought I'd be stamping for 20 years. <laughs> so, so I didn't buy the re-inkers. And had I bought the re-inkers, I'd be able to use those ink pads. But what happened was I didn't have the re-inkers and they all dried up after 20 years. I mean, it's, they're water-based ink, right? So they're gonna dry up, it's just natural. But if you guys had re-inkers, you could re-ink your ink pads. Also, you could do things like the baby wipe technique, or you could do inking up on a block with your aqua painters. Like there's so much you guys can do with re-inkers and I never saw the value back then. I think I started seeing the value maybe 10 years ago is when I first started getting re-inkers. And so now I have ink pads that are probably up to 10 years old. Okay, so you guys saw what I did there. I put sequins and I, you guys got ink all over my hands. Um, I got, I added about five sequins into the area so that they're always in the sky. So even when you have your card flat here, they are sticking up in the sky. But we need to give that a little time to dry because I, I don't want them shaking all around like a salt shaker when I put it all together. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so what can we do here? Oh, so you guys, you have your little cloche dome. So these are a little accessory that you can get. You get 10 of them. So everybody got one in your kit that got cards from me. And how they work is they have stick on the top and the bottom. Uh, oh, good, Debbie. I'm glad your ink pads are still juicy. That's good. So what you're going to do is peel off this waxy paper. And this will now line up through here. Um, so you guys, I know Debbie said she's a hobbyist, so she doesn't get re-inkers. But even if you're a hobbyist, you can use re-inkers to do things like what we just did earlier. I mean, yeah, you could dip your block in your ink pad, but the baby wipe technique, if you guys saw Kelly's technique Thursday a couple weeks ago, you need re-inkers and you put them all in your baby wipe and you can make cards like that leaf card that she made, oh, so pretty. Um, I think I did a color 101 like over the last, like two weeks now in a row and I have another two to, that are gonna be released. Um, how to use re-inkers. Um, you can even fill up your spritzer. That's one thing I forgot to talk about. Um, you can use, let's see if I have it. Mm, I used to have a reinker here, or um, a spritzer. You have a spritzer that you fill with the reinking bottles of ink, and so that's another way to use them. Hmm, they're around somewhere. Okay, I think I'm buying enough time. Um, oh, yeah, Carissa does uh, with photo paper that uses reinkers. So reinkers aren't just for reinking ink pads, <laughs> they have many uses. Okay, so you guys, I gave you all a little collection of sprinkles like that. So you're gonna put them down like that. Okay. Um, oh yes, Jean, you add texture or color to texture paste. You got it, yes. So now peel this back off. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna line this up over your, your area, okay? So get it as good as you can. And then that adhesive will stick around the edges here. And now you've just created <laughs> your shaker. Somebody in class, I think it was Heather. Heather forgot her little subtle shimmer sequins in her, so she didn't have anything floating around in there, but it still looked good without it. But you can see I've got those sticking up in the sky, and then you've got some shaking all around, okay? And then what happens is you're gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back side of this. And this now just goes right down in the center of that white piece <clears throat> and let that soak in. If you guys, did, I don't know if you're making your card with me, but I did save a couple of the sequins to put on the outside. So if you didn't put them all on the inside, you can put some on the outside as well. But if you put them all on the inside, that's okay. Um, to put on the bow, what I did is I take a glue dot and I'm gonna put that right on the top, the hump there, and we're gonna put our bow right on that. I think that's where I did it. Or did, oh, I did it flat. Actually, you guys, I put that little glue dot right on the paper right back there. And then the bow stuck right there. Now, it's not enough. One little glue dot isn't going to hold that down forever. So I would definitely put another glue dot 
I actually have one kind of stuck to the side over here. And then my ribbon can kind of stick to that so it stays going down. And then I put another one on the other side so that that little tail kind of sticks into that. If you really want to make sure it's secure, you could always put a glue dot behind this little hump and that little hump, these bunny ears right here. But, okay, then when you get it where you want it, use your scissors and trim the ends. Oh, I hope you had a really good team meeting, Faye. You have yours. It's the, probably the second Thursday of the month is what I'm guessing. Okay, <clears throat> now, last but not least, we have a couple more things. So we got to do our little mantle. And we have a couple more of these to glue. So what I did is I found my snowflakes and I put some dots of glue. Three looked good to me. <clears throat> you can grab your picky tool and pick up some of those. Oh, there's one on there already. So let's just put that down there. And let's grab that guy right there. Put one there. You guys, um, I like to use liquid glue for things like this. I know that that might be hard for some people that this stuff works really good as well the fine tip glue um and then if you had baby glue dots that come in the paper pumpkin they sometimes send you mini ones like little half size ones those would work too hi barbara gabby okay then we have our mantle so i'm going to put a little line of liquid glue right along the bottom there and then this will get nudged up right to it Okay, you can let that sit, good. I did not try to glue that to that <laughs> before putting this down. I put the mantle piece down, so I had something for this to attach to. Hi, Kathy MacArthur. I hope you're doing good. And then this one, I'm just running a little bit of liquid glue in random spots. And again, you guys gotta be careful setting this down so that you don't get glue oozing everywhere. <clears throat> Adhesive sheets would work really good for this. Now, because I have something to hold on to, I can just set this right over the top of it and try not to wiggle, wiggle it all over the place, but just give it a second and the mantle. So this silver from the mantle, it comes from the silver glimmer or silver foil paper. Hi, Jenny Miller. Virtual hugs to you too, thanks for sharing. This silver paper is three 10 by 10, 12 by 12 sheets. I think it's $10. You get like a, there's three different silver hues. So this is the one that's got purpley and navy in with it. But then that's your mantle. Okay. So you guys can really see the snowflakes. They kind of like pop a little bit, but there you go. Okay. So let's recap here, you guys. We had our Halloween card. We had a like Thanksgiving-ish card. And then we had our Christmas card. I love them all, you guys. I honestly don't, if you ask me which one I would pick, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I would have a really hard time. I think in class on Monday night, people liked this one a lot, the pumpkin one. And I'll tell you, I looked at like five different cards for this one from different various avenues and I came up with this one. <laughs> so I think I saw this copper foil pumpkin and this, like a pumpkin next to it, but a whole different color pattern. But I loved the copper for this die cut. Um, and I pulled in the soft succulent because it matched the leaves. And so I had fun with that one. So it was good. Oh my gosh, you guys, we already got all three of them done. Do you have a favorite? Janet says she loves them all. So that's good. I like it when you like them all too, guys. That makes me feel good. So what, we're, what I'm working on with Carissa is um, we are working on November cards, you guys. Oh my gosh. Over the last week and a half or so, we've been working on the painted season Christmas card class. Oh, and Lynn said I hit the nail on the head. Good. I like that. <laughs> Hitting the nail on the head is a good thing as long as your thumb doesn't get in there, right? So Laura likes Christmas best. Okay. So you guys, uh, the other thing too is the gingerbread. I have a gingerbread class that's coming up um, the memories and more class. And so I have some more space on that one if anybody's interested, but Chris and I have been working on the stamp -a stack for November, which I was only going to do it online, you guys, but I threw in a Friday night. I think it's called the Deer Widow Hunter Weekend, which is November 20 something, like the 20, it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Um, uh, and then 
the, it's the Friday before. So the day before I'm doing the online class, we're working on the stamp stat cards. And so, oh my gosh, they're going to be so cool. You guys are going to love them. And then on top of it, the painted Christmas is the featured sweet bundle for next month. And we were working on those. So by next week, we'll have some cards to share with you guys. So that's exciting. Um, yay. Arliss had fun. Um, Melanie wanted, her mom wanted the Halloween card to send her daughter. <laughs> Love it. Okay, Judy, you, the pumpkin one is probably number one, but the green tree one is very close to being numbers. So that makes the moon one second. I love it. Okay. So we're going to do a quick drawing, you guys. Um, oh, I also have a gift to give away from last week. We had the celebration celebration event last week, and I have a little black book to give away and a little party favor that I gave everybody. So let me just see here how many people placed orders to get the class for free. So we have one, we have two, three, four, Five, six, seven, I tried to do this ahead and I forgot. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Barbara likes them all. And she's learning a lot. That's awesome. You guys, I feel like sometimes I say that the same things over and over and over and over, but you never know who's watching, when they're watching, and if you guys remember everything that I say. So I just keep saying things <laughs> and hope that you pick up little nuggets and ahas. Like, oh, that's awesome. So let me I'll flip down, you guys. And so you can see. So again, if you guys want to sign up for classes, you guys, my email address is chrismbertram at msn.com. Or you can text me at 920-960-4390. You can call me. Honestly, just to sign up for a class, you just have to tell me you want to take a class. I, I, I make it so simple. And sometimes it can get so complicated. But I have a website. You guys can register via my website. That's all fine and dandy. And you can do that if you want to pay by credit card. Um, but all you have to do is send me an email or a text or a call. Tell me you want to sign up for a class. I get you on my list. And then we figure out the payment or ordering part afterwards. So... Um, random number generator. Oh my gosh, that's so little. I can't even read that. Okay, so we said 11. So we'll put in 11. All right, and then we are going to click generate. Number two, my favorite number. Barbara Barco, you are a lucky girl. You are the lucky winner of a prize that I don't even have picked out yet. <laughs> but it will get put, how I do my door prizes for class is um, I find something from my vault of um, awesome retired products like because that I overbuy. That's how it works. But some embellishment or a ribbon or something. And then the next time I mail a package to you, it goes in with your package. So well, I'll be sending out the next batch of cards, I think, next Friday. So you'll have a prize in with your next package. So woohoo! Congratulations. So I also have this little black book. You guys, the I still have some Harvest Meadow cards to give away. Um, I will be giving them away. You guys, I have class on Sunday. <laughs> I forgot all about it until like a moment ago. Um, um, Linda, um, I believe that you had an email that you wanted to sign up for the Gingerbread Memories and More class. And I think that email is in my computer, <laughs> which I still need to look that email up. You guys, I'll let you in on a little secret. I had email issues back in July. Uh, they kind of shut me down from sending emails from my MSN to like a few lots of people at the same time, like hundreds of people. And so I had to set up an email address through my website. The thing is, I can't check that email on my phone. Um, I have to be in my personal laptop and in that Gmail account. It's like a business Gmail account. It's really crazy. And so if I'm not on my computer, and which it happens, you guys, I cannot be on my computer for a day or two or over the weekend from a Friday to a Monday. And if you reply to one of my class emails, it goes into that email. It doesn't go to the Chris M. Bertram at MSN.com. And so I might not see your email for three days, five days, or even like one time it was two weeks that I forgot that I was like, oh, shoot. So yeah, so it's always the best way to contact me is through the Chris M. Bertram at MSN.com or my, uh, my texting. You guys, I'm a texter, like fastest fingers of the North, right? <laughs> so, oh, uh, so, oh, you're very welcome, Brenda. I'm so happy to do the lives. You know, when I don't have that full-time daytime job, I will be doing lives uh, during the day. At some point, I'll do a, a daytime class, but I don't know when that will happen. So, okay, so I have this little black book here, you guys. This is what we did last week, uh, Thursday for the live. It was 
this little black book, and it was in purple or Coastal Cabana. It was Highland Heather, Coastal Cabana, or Melon Mambo. And so everybody who read um, Qualified for Celebration Celebration, we made this book last week, but I also included it in your little packages as in-class these little guys, and I didn't show these off last week, but this is a little pillow box. It comes as a die in the mini catalog, and there were little candies, you guys. <laughs> Another fun fact is I didn't know that your candies melted in your packages, so if you've ever gotten melted candy from me, I am so sorry. Um, I can't remember who it was, but sometime over the summer, I sent some little pineapples to somebody, and she got it and sent me a picture, and it was all melted together. And she's like, did you mean to send this? And I can't, I can't think of her name right now. But she's like, did you mean to send me some old candy? I'm like, no, it was a pineapple when I sent it. And it was so hot in that little package. It melted into a little sugary drink type thing. But it looked nasty because it was yellow mixed with green. So you guys, um, so we were thinking, well, what kind of candy can we put in here that's not going to melt? And so we came up with these little caramels. So if you guys got them, um, so the, hopefully they didn't melt. So um, do I ever sleep, Kathy? Brenda answered it. No, she doesn't. <laughs> yep, Brenda knows me. Yeah, you guys, I get a little sleep. Sleep in Sundays. Sundays when I sleep in. So drum roll, you guys. Brrr, winner, winner, chicken dinner of this book is a gal by the name of Marsha Boucher. You, your name was drawn for this book. Um, B-U-S-H-U-R. I do not know who you are. I don't have your address, so I don't know where to send this. So if you could private message me your address, I promise all I'll send you is this little package in the mail with my schedule. <laughs> then you'll know what's coming up over the near future. So you are the lucky winner of that, Marsha. So I will also be scheduling a post for tomorrow morning of the winner. So that hopefully Marsha will see it. If you guys know Marsha, you can tell her that she has won a prize and she should reach out to me. So yay, congratulations to Marsha. And also to Barbara for winning a little prize from my vault. Um, okay, so you guys, what's coming up Sunday? 2 o'clock p.m. Central is when we're going to be doing the Let's Just Stamp cards. I have one set of those cards left. I have one set from tonight. I did not see anybody comment that they were interested in it. So I have that one set left if somebody is still interested in it. And um, Cutest Halloween, you guys, sign up for that one if you want those kits. And the Ready to Go Mom has those ready so they could get mailed tomorrow. If you guys let me know tonight, I can pop them in the mail to, either tonight, um, get them ready, and then they could go in the mail tomorrow or Saturday. And then fun folds and ink, paper, scissors. <laughs> you guys have a great lineup for you. <laughs> so we'll be busy the next few weeks stamping away. So awesome. Okay, do you guys have anything else for me? Otherwise, we're going to sign off. And what does Sunday look like? Oh, here, I'll show you. I will show you. There's three cards. It's, it's my card class that I do with Diane Bogenhagen. So we design the cards together. We pick a stamp set that's uh, the... The focal images and the sentiments are in the same stamp set so that you don't have to buy multiple stamp sets. And this one features the Nature's Harvest stamp set and so um, and the Nature's Harvest or the Harvest Medley paper. Um, it has the coneflower stamp and then that other little flower in there. Now, if you didn't have those, you could interchange with something you have that's florally or not florally. And then just a long skinny sentiment and then a short sentiment. But the die, there's no die cutting and there's no embossing. This is our let's just stamp. There's no die cutting. There's no embossing. It's just beautiful cards showing you that you can create beautiful cards not having a stamp and cut and emboss machine. So yeah, I hope that, so I have one set of these guys left. The first person that reaches out to me would get it. If you're in person though, like local to me, Diane's teaching this class on Tuesday. So, all right, you guys. Oh, another class in the books. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sticking with me all night. I am so excited. Like I, the technology has been working so good these last few weeks. I'm just hopeful and thankful that I'm praying, I'm praying that it keeps going that way. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, uh, lots of sunshine and love and hugs to you. If you missed Kelly's Technique Thursday, go back and watch it. And if you're just joining in later, you can always catch the replay of this video now after it publishes. So lots of hugs, you guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Sunday. Bye.